All right, here's the proxies. Jones is red, man is blue, Briffa is green. You'll see that Jones, man, and Briffa all converge at about 1910 and basically stay on the same course. What's not shown on this graph is the instrumental data. The instrumental data converges just about perfectly with the proxies from 1910 onward, but you can't see that here. Now, here's the correction that was issued on November 24th, 2009. This is after they got busted for hiding the decline. Notice how the only convergence between the proxies and the instrumental occurs between 1910 and 1940 now. Now I've done some highlighting in, uh, in this picture. The white vertical line shows regions of convergence. The light gray line it points to the regions in which the three proxies could potentially be recalibrated to converge. However, the proxies need to conform to the instrumental in order for the proxies to be relier indicators of temperature. The only region in which the proxies do conform to the instrumental, at, you know, this after they had to admit their lie, is in the single incline from 1910 to 1940. 1910 to 1940 is the point at which all data was calibrated to converge. Unless they can make the proxies converge reliably with the instrumental, the proxy data is not a reliable indicator of temperature. They could not do this, and so they cooked the proxy data. Here's the hockey stick from 1999. There is no warming period and no cooling period. There is an ever so slight decline, followed by a spike in temperature, which coincides suspiciously with the introduction of instrumental data. This should be a red flag to any critically thinking person, but I won't go into that here. Here's an update from November 27, 2009. This is after the emails and data were leaked to the public. You'll see that there is now a medieval warming period. Why did they admit that there was a medieval warming period all of a sudden? Because they got busted. That's why. You can see clearly that the proxy temperatures clear the zero mark. I'm a little bit pissed off that they cut off the proxy data after 1850, which is where the instrumental starts, but, you know, they already got busted for cooking the proxies during the instrumental period, so I figure since they can't lie about it anymore, they might as well just omit the data. Whatever. Returning to the November 24th update, we see that there is no medieval warming period, and the proxies never cross the zero bar. Here's the 1999 proxy stick. Same deal, no medieval warming period, the proxies never cross the zero bar. Moving on to the CO2 warming hypothesis. Now this is what you all probably saw. There is a clear correlation between CO2 and temperature. This is a recreation of Gore's graph, and this is available all over the web, including Wikipedia, and you can check it out for yourself. This is not an official IPCC graph. IPCC refuses to release anything like this. They'll only release um, bitmaps, which you can't really inspect closely. Now, this one right here, all the sources are cited and freely accessible. All of the data is direct from the sources from Al Gore's graph. The code by which this data was assembled is posted. This is open source and nobody contests it. Now, the best thing about this graph is that it's vector. This is not bitmap. You can open it up with Adobe Illustrator and look very closely at it. I'll encourage you all to do this and inspect it carefully. CO2 either lags or coincides with temperature and not the other way around. Study it carefully, study it close up, and study it far away. It can be deceptive, but you will figure it out. Most climate scientists do admit that CO2 lags temperature. There is no consensus on their explanation for this. They usually make vague references to climate models which explain the lag, but still support the hypothesis that CO2 is the primary driver of temperature trends. Now, I'll point out that climate models are hypotheses. They are not tested against reality. You cannot support 
the CO2 warming hypothesis with another hypothesis. That is not science. Now, I would like anyone who's critical of me and believes in CO2-driven anthropogenic global warming to debate me on this. Y'all have leveled some really weird accusations against me, and I'm calling you out to debate me on the actual science.